strong? The currently uncatalogued species, known by the nickname of the Hammerpede and even the Xenocobra, is a serpentine creature born from mutations of various worm species brought on by exposure to the engineer's genetic accelerant pathogen, one of the most notable of which was the native worm species on the moon of LV-223. While little is currently understood about these life forms, we at the project thought it prudent to have them covered in a data log regardless. The hammerpede looks like the combination of a worm and a cobra, being that their bodies take a long, mostly cylindrical, and smooth shape with a crest on its head, as, as well as that, they slither at high speeds, which has been observed to be their main form of locomotion. With pale white and blue-hued skin that appears partly translucent, the creatures that have been observed to date measure in at around 1.2 meters in length and appears to be quite muscular for its size, seen displaying this strength a number of times against potential threats to its existence. Whilst this is the current recorded measurement researchers believe for the age of the specimen being only hours, that the Xenocobra could likely reach a staggering size up to 10 meters in length. The head of the creature is comprised of two skin folds which can wrap up to form into a tight bulb for when the creature is moving about its environment, appearing phallic in nature when it does. These folds can also unfold to reveal a puckered orifice, presumed to be the creature's mouth. Once unfolded, the beast closely resembles that of the earth species Ophiophagus hanna, or the king cobra. In this state, the hammer peach shows a distinct head crest of sorts that seems to be devoid of any type of visual sensory organs. While it's possible it may still have some unknown form of visual organ or tissue, it's more likely that the creatures use some other sense to detect and navigate the world around it. It could be through thermal pits, something bioelectrical maybe perhaps like the Ampoli of Lorenzini of earth shark species. We simply have too little data on them to be able to accurately surmise this fact. Like many of its relatives descending from interactions with the engineer's pathogen accelerant, this species has a caustic acidic blood. Its strength is comparable to that of the species Plagiarus prepotens otherwise known by its catalogue name of Xenomorph XX121. Another miraculous feat of their biology is their ability to regenerate large segments of their body. Much like a starfish or salamander of Earth, the hammerpede is capable of the regeneration of tissue and even organs. What does set it apart from other species like those found on Earth though is the sheer speed in which it is able to do so. Witnessed by the crew of the USCS as Prometheus, the hammerpede is able to regenerate its whole head within a matter of a few seconds. This has terrifying prospects for any that come into contact with the creatures that startle them or appear as labelled as a threat. You can attempt to kill the creature via blade or bullet, however it's likely the creatures could quickly heal or regrow a severed section of the body and continue their assault. In the case of the Prometheus crew, their attempts to kill the creature via cutting into its flesh also spewed forth concentrated acidic blood that impacted their visor plate and lead to the one member being mutated by the pathogen accelerant pools that had originally spawned the hammerpy. It's likely nothing short of incineration of the body of the creature would be enough to hinder its ability to regenerate and cause lethal amounts of damage to its body. The hammerpede is an interesting case when it comes to its level of aggression and its natural behaviors. Like previously stated, there is too little data to accurately give a picture of their natural tendencies. The current main evidence comes from the transmissions of the doomed USCSS Prometheus expedition in 2093, during which saw two scientists, a biologist Roth Nilburn and geologist Sean Fifield make first contact with the creatures. While stranded in the engineer's temples following a violent silica storm, cutting them off from their ship, the two scientists take refuge in the headroom of the temple. It's here that the hammerpede makes its presence known to them. Arising out of a puddle, two of the creatures seem curious about the expedition scientists, but maintain a safe distance. At first, it remains still, almost as though it is observing them, despite the creature being devoid of anything akin to eyes. Milburn becomes infatuated with the creatures, never before having encountered an alien species, let alone one of this complexity and being as awesome as it would have been he attempted to move closer to the creature. The hammer peed previously having its head in a knot, unfoiled its flaps to reveal a mouth-like orifice and proceeded to arch back and let out an audible hiss at the approaching potential threat. Now this should have been enough of a warning sign for the man to back off and leave the creature be. It's likely that if Milburn had slowly backed away and left the creature to its own, that the situation could have de-escalated and both he and Fifield could have avoided what was to come next. But, instead of heeding the warning signs Milburn pressed on with his attempt to touch the beast. It was then that the creature lunged forward and grasped his hand with its face. The hammerpede was seen to be able to use its facial folds as a gripping vice, something that two fully grown men could not remove with their combined strengths. The situation devolved rapidly as the hammerpede continued to tighten its grasp and proceeded to wrap its entire body around Milburn's entire arm. In another display of its strength the creature would snap Milburn's arm backwards, breaking it. 
Fifield would attempt to cut the creature off his fellow scientists, however, when slicing through the creature's flesh under its head and severing it. A gout of acidic blood spewed out from its wound and sprayed all over the visor plate of Fifield's pressure suit. Fifield's face began to melt into the polymer of the visor before collapsing, suffocating into a nearby pool of the engineer's pathogenic accelerant, the same thing that had spawned the hammer pee. In the meantime, the creature had quickly regenerated its head and moved into a tear in Nilburn's suit, travelling towards his head before violently forcing its body into his mouth and down his throat. It's likely that the trauma from having a nearly one and a half metre worm force itself into his throat and into his chest cavity leading to a painful death for Milburn. The reason the creature attacked the two is evident. However, the question is if Milburn had have backed off would the creature have not attacked. I think it's unlikely the creature would have been hostile had he retreated from attempting to make contact. In years of study of the xenomorph creature across the middle heavens, we have seen a common aggression towards all non-botanical life that is unmatched. They give no warning signs or chances to retreat, they attack and kill with savage brutality. This is in opposition to the behavior of the hammer pee. It gave plenty of time and the chance to back off and displayed an attitude of fear towards the two scientists after its prior seemingly curious attitude towards them. Had they have removed themselves from the direct presence of the creature, it's likely the hammerpede would have gone about its business. Another fact that makes me think that the hammerpede was not interested in the two was likely due to its method of obtaining nutrients. I very much doubt that the creature was looking to them as a source of food as it doesn't appear to have any visible teeth and doesn't appear to eat any of their tissues. Whilst it's possible it consumed some of Nilburn's flesh and tissues during its time in his body, when the creature emerges later from his mouth it doesn't appear to have grown or put on any further weight. We at the project have theorized the creature to have some other unknown method of obtaining nutrients that is yet unknown. The Xenocobra or Hamipede is the result of worm-like species coming into contact with the engineer's pathogen accelerant. The main example of the species that has been able to be recorded is the ones discovered by the crew of the USCSS Prometheus in 2093 on the moon LV223. These Hamipede were created after the crew investigated an engineer temple and opened one of the chambers within the headroom. This room contained many numerous ampules of the engineer's pathogen accelerant, which were disturbed by the sudden change in the stagnant environment in the room that had existed sealed for the last 2,000 years. This caused the ampules to degrade and begin leaking the pathogen onto the chamber's floor, leading to large amounts of the liquid pooling in the room. Unannounced to the members of the crew a native worm-like species, the moon came into contact with the pathogen and begun a series of mutations into what we would eventually call the hammerpee. It's not certain whether or not the creature we saw was an infantile or matured stage for the creature, however researchers have suggested the former, theorizing the creature to be able to grow much larger, to around 10 meters in length. However, it's also not confirmed whether or not the mutations of the creature would have halted at the creature we saw. It's likely the beast would continue to mutate further given that it seemed to have been choosing to further bath in the pools of the pathogen. The only other time these creatures have apparently been encountered is in a region outside the Middle Heaven region, in an area of space known as the Far Spin Ward Colonies, a long lost and isolated region of space. In this region rumored reports of the Hamapede have been made, but the project is yet to be able to verify these sources as credible. More research will have to be conducted in this region before further data logs in the matter can be transmitted. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like company representatives, the Sith Lord 906, Lewis Perkins, Jack Fleming Jr. and Scott Jardy, or like our team members, Raunchy, Ambrosia and Vladimir Chernikov. But until next transmission, this is Project Akron bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.